G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. In today's video we're going to talk about VI improvers, also sometimes called viscosity modifiers, and we'll talk about them in the context of a review of what viscosity index is. We'll also talk about the chemistry of VI improvers and how they act in uh, a lubricant, and then we'll talk a little bit about its impact on shear stability. Okay, so just to recap on what viscosity index is. So it's the measure of a lubricant's variation in viscosity over a temperature range. So unfortunately, um, we get the opposite of what we want. So uh, what we actually want is for a lubricant um, to have low viscosity at low temperatures and high viscosity at high temperatures. Why? Imagine an engine starting up. As it starts up when it's cold, it has to kind of act against the viscosity of the oil, right? So we want something that's nice and thin so that we can start out our engine easily. But when it gets up to operating temperature, we want something that's nice and thick that will protect all the engine components. And as you can see from the line, nature gives us the exact opposite of what we want. So here I'm showing the example of a 0W and this would be a sort of a 20 weight and then a multi-grade oil, which would be a 0W20 is one that bridges the gap. So the industry standard is to measure the difference between the viscosity at 40 and 100 degrees Celsius. So we'll substitute the low and the high temperatures for 40 and 100. Um, and it's a bit of a dimensionless, dimensionless number. So you'll see numbers, you know, typically anywhere between, let's say, 80 and, and like 200. Of course, the vis viscosity temperature relationship is not linear. So if you actually plot them on a log graph, it will still be curved. And so you can see kind of at freezing temperatures and below, we get extremely high viscosities and lubricants get very thick and up at high temperatures, they get, they get quite thin. All right, so um, we know of course um, that the Stokes temperatures, uh, sorry, viscosities can map onto SAE crankcase grades. And so I'm gonna use those because it's a, a slightly easier system to use, all right? So imagine we've got all the SAE crankcase grades going from 0W all the way up to 60. I'm not including the, the new one. There is a, a new one, which is a 16. I'm just gonna ignore that for the moment. Okay, and remember we're, we're measuring at the low temperature and at the high temperature. So, um, Temperature increases as we go to the right of this page, and we're gonna call these just generically cold and hot for our demonstration purposes. So if I have a lubricant that, for example, um, acts within the criteria for an SAE 40 oil when it's cold, and it continues to act as an SAE 40 oil when it's hot, then that is an SAE 40 weight oil. This would be a monograde oil, right? Because it acts the same at cold and hot temperatures. These are more common than you might expect. So in some diesel engine applications, there are still monograde oils. Um, all the natural and landfill gas engine oils are still monograde's as well. So they all act as what we would call a 40 weight. Now you can reduce the overall viscosity um, of the base oil, right? and maybe you'd end up with something that acts like a 20 weight at cold temperatures and a 20 weight at hot temperatures, and it would be a monograde 20. Reduce it again, and you might get to a 10W. So W is just kind of uh, common parlance for like winter grade. All right, so at cold temperatures, that might be something of interest. You know, most of the engine crankcase oils these days start with a, you know, a 0W or a 5W, and they're a multi-grade oil, so it'll be very common to see something like a 0W20 or a 5W30. So what, what does that mean in a practical sense? How are we altering the composition of the lubricant to get us that multi-grade performance? Well, let's say, for example, that a monograde 10W can be achieved using a standard mineral base oil, right? So mineral base oils tend to have lower VIs than synthetics. Right, so as you go from group one to group three, the viscosity index increases. And similarly, if you then go to a PAO or some of the synthetic esters, they can have higher VIs. So if we wanted to achieve, let's say, for example, a 10W40, we can do that with a higher viscosity base oil, right? Because 
So our standard, our reference is kind of 10W, but if we improve the viscosity index, it is going to, uh, let's say, get less thin at hot temperatures. And so at hot temperatures, it might look like a 40 weight oil, therefore 10W40. And so we may have achieved this additional performance by using a synthetic base oil, okay? Now, now we get into the realm of VI improvers. So what exactly are they? So a VI improver is like a polymer that is, is, is kind of wrapped in on itself. And the reason it needs to take this shape is because um, viscosity is a function of the forces between molecules. And the forces between molecules are dictated by the surface area of the molecule. So you can imagine if a, if a molecule is much bigger, it has more surface area with which to interact with other molecules around it. So what we want is a molecule that changes size with temperature. So with VI improvers, we go from something with a re reasonably small radius, and as we increase the temperature, it expands and it gets larger, and therefore its contribution to the overall viscosity of the lubricant increases, right? So it helps the lubricant stay thick at hot temperatures, right? Because the molecule is growing. That's sort of the key to the performance of VI improvers. Okay, so how does that now look? So imagine if we took our 10W40 synthetic base oil and we added viscosity improver additives to it. Okay, so now we might be able to achieve a 10W60. And the difference between the 10W40 and the 10W60 is made up by the VI improvers. So you see the contribution at low temperatures is very small, but as we heat up, the molecules expand, right? And their contribution increases. Right, and that's why the difference gets larger and larger as you get to hot temperatures. Now we can achieve a 10W60 by adding VI improvers to a mineral base oil. We would just need to add a lot more VI improvers to get from a 10W mineral base oil to a 10W60 finished lubricant. So I hope that makes sense. All right, so now let's talk about what happens to VI improvers over time, right? So I use this example, I think it was in the um, gear oil efficiency video, where between contact surfaces, um, molecules need to squeeze into a tiny, tiny gap, okay? VI improvers have to do exactly the same thing. So as they squeeze through the gap, they get compressed, and then they need to come out on the other side and expand again. Well, that's not always perfect. So sometimes what happens is that they compress but the, the shear forces in the contact zone actually tear them apart because they're long polymers. And so they break into two smaller molecules, right? So this is the action of shear. And these molecules have a much smaller surface area, which means that their contribution to the overall viscosity has reduced. So what, is that, what would that look like, um, I guess, for a lubricant, is that as the VI improvers decrease, right, that mineral base oil with lots of VI improvers, as it shears down, it could start to look like a 10W40. And over time, it could degrade and start looking like a 10W30, then a 10W20, and so on, right? So that's the problem. That's, that's why you can't just start with any crappy base stock and just use as much VI improver as you want. All right, the other thing about VI improvers is they're only effective over a certain temperature range. So if I start with a, a, a VI molecule and I reduce the temperature, it gets smaller. But beyond a certain temperature, it doesn't decrease in size anymore. It's kind of reached its most compact form. And the same thing goes for higher temperatures, right? So as you increase the temperature, the size of the molecule increases. But beyond a certain temperature, it can't expand anymore. And so it stays the same size. So how would that look on our, on our graph? Okay, so imagine, right, that I'm gonna extend the base oil lines out a little bit further. Okay, so this, for example, is the synthetic base oil line, this theoretical uh, synthetic 10W40. So if I have 
The difference between 10W40 and 10W60 is the contribution of the VI improvers. At lower temperatures, beyond where the VI is effective, all the performance is dictated by the base oil, right? But at higher temperatures, what will happen is, because the VI improvers can't expand anymore, the line will track with the base oil line, right? And so that's where um, kind of the, the performance will go. Similarly, if we were to look at the mineral base oil plus VI improver, what would that look like? Again, extending the line out to the left shows that because the, the quality of the base oil is lower, it has a lower VI, its performance at very cold temperatures, it will get much thicker than the synthetic base oil. And at higher temperatures, it will get much thinner. So it will actually, at very high temperatures, start to look like a 10W40, even with no shearing. Right, so this is kind of the reasons why you want to start with a really high quality, high VI base oil, rather than starting with a low quality base oil and just adding VI improvers. All right, I hope that's been um, illustrative. I know it was a little bit confusing at times. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Otherwise, as usual, this has been Lubrication Explained.